<laughs> hey, it looks like we got a couple of early birds here today. You guys, welcome in. Thanks for joining us right on time here. Awesome. We're going to give everybody a little bit more time to jump in here. Hopefully everybody's getting the notification. Get everybody in our chat here. But as you guys are coming in, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to have a little bit of fun today. I've got some fun products that I'm going to be working with. And let's see here. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. Hopefully you're excited to learn some great techniques with nails today. Got our practice hand. We've got some new products that I'm gonna be working with, showing you some really fun colors. All right, yeah, well just, uh, looks like we're getting a few more people to join us here today. So again, welcome in. Lena Lim, hello again, it's nice to see you back. Thanks for joining us again. Um, you guys, we've got some great colors that I'm going to be working with. I actually was planning something else for today, but I got my order of my new Slick Pour colors, and hopefully a lot of you guys got them as well. So I'm going to be working with those. I just couldn't wait. So we're going to do maybe the design that I had in mind. Maybe we'll do that later in this week. So, But I am going to be working with those new spring colors in our Slick Pour collection. We're going to be working with them um, as an acrylic. Yes, you can definitely do that. Um, hello everyone. A lot of, lot of return, return guests here today, you guys. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Julie, Connie, Natalie, I'm glad you're excited to learn. Susan, Margie, Sarah. Oh my goodness, I don't, I, I'm probably gonna butcher this name, but Nikiru? I, I apologize if that's not correct, but welcome. Melissa, welcome. Thank you guys all for joining today. We're gonna have some fun today. So like I said, we're gonna be using the new Slick Pour colors. I just got those in and I can't wait to try them out. So we're gonna we're gonna play with those today. And you guys, I'm trying a little bit of a different camera angle today. So let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat here if it's looking good for you. Um, otherwise we can go back to kind of more straight on. So let me know in the chat there if this looks like a good angle. But we'll get started on our nail today. We're gonna start by always pushing back those cuticles just like we do every single time. Oh, Carol, looks like you got your order in too. Did you get the Slick Pour colors? I hope you did. So you're gonna enjoy them. So we've got our cuticles pushed back. We're gonna start by removing the shine just like we always do. Again, I'm using our medium sanding band and my e-file is at about 4,000 RPMs. I usually go about 4,000 usually about four to five thousand um i know some people like to go just a little bit slower about three thousand but i always say about four to six is about right for when you're doing your prep all right you did get the colors awesome i love it i love it all right we're gonna just go through dust off that nail and i always like to make sure to dust that nail really well before i actually do my swipe just to make sure i get all of that dust before dust cleaned off before and we're good to go. All right, next thing we're gonna use is our swipe, and I pump a little bit of that up onto my manicure brush so I don't have to use a lint-free wipe. If you prefer to use the lint-free wipes, you can definitely do that, but I actually like to use my brush. I feel like it gets it a little bit cleaner. Again, if there's any last little residual dust, it's gonna get that, but then I also don't have to worry about using those um, those lint-free wipes and possibly getting that swipe on my skin. So the less we expose our own skin to the products, the better. Okay, let's see. Tiffany, I'm sorry you got here too late. Could I see your nails, please? Yes, I'm glad you asked. So earlier in the week, you guys, we did another video and I actually filled my nails and showed you guys how to fill and kind of change out the design a little bit. So I did some gel polish on those. I finished up the nails. So yes, you guys can definitely see those. Thanks for asking. I appreciate that. Okay, so we'll get back to our nail here. We've got our nail, our cuticles pushed back. We removed the shine, pro or swipe to cleanse it. Now we're gonna go in with our protein bond. So protein bond, if you don't know yet, I know we talk about this on every one of our streams here, but protein bond is our bonder. It works kind of like a double-sided tape. So it's going to stick to that natural nail, but then it's gonna leave a sticky surface for that product to grab onto. 
Now it's not like a primer, it's a bonder. I'm gonna come in a little closer here. So it's not going to leave that chalky dry finish like primers would. Uh, protein bond is a bonder, so it is going to leave that sticky surface so it's gonna grab onto whatever you put on top of it. And on my enhancements, I do two coats of protein bond because that way I know I've got that really good added insurance that that product is gonna adhere really well. Okay, we're gonna grab a form and we're gonna apply our form. We're gonna do a sculpted nail today. I think maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a little bit of a longer nail, a little bit, maybe more of a stiletto. So I'm gonna take that little tab out of the center and put that on the back. If it's the shiny side or the sticky side up, it doesn't matter, but as long as you put that little tab on the back, it's gonna give you a little bit more support and a little more durability to your form, okay? Then we're just going to pinch those two little silver tabs together. These little guys right here, you wanna pinch those together nice and even. You wanna make sure that you're not getting them crooked or lopsided like that, because that's gonna make your nail crooked. So the more straight and even and as close together as, those, as you can get those, the more straight your nail's gonna be. All right, now on a, on a real person, I actually like to open this little perforation, but sometimes when you're working on the practice hand, it's actually easier to leave that closed. So just kind of a little tip, if you're working on a practice hand, leave this closed. If you're working on a real person, I open that up. So personal preference, however you like to do that. And Melissa Luna, your husband calls me the Bob Ross of nails. You know what? I appreciate that. I love Bob Ross and I take that as a very high compliment. So tell your husband, thank you. All right, you guys, I got my form on here. And because I'm gonna be doing more of a stiletto, I did pinch that end together. And I'm not gonna pinch it any farther because we're gonna use a lot of that length on our form here today. All right, we're gonna just kind of come in underneath and really kind of tighten that form a little bit more under here so it doesn't end up too wide on the sides. So again, kind of coming underneath that nail, really making sure that that is nice and tight under there. All right, you guys, if you are loving our stream today, if you love young nails, or even if you're just new to young nails and you want more education, please hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you guys. We want you to join us here all the time. So if you hit that subscribe button, then you can turn your notifications on and you will always know when we go live. So make sure to do that if you haven't already. And I am just grabbing a couple of things here. I've got my liquid. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna do um, some acrylics today. Sorry guys, I guess I'm a little closer than I thought I was. So I'm gonna take my monomer and we're using our traditional monomer today. And I'm gonna pour that into my Dappen dish. I like to use my brush as a guide for my liquid. So I'm gonna touch my brush to the top of my bottle and just pour straight down. And we're gonna fill up my Dappen dish about a quarter of the way. So you never wanna fill your Dappen dish all the way because that's gonna be too much and you're not gonna be able to tap out as much liquid as you need to. If your Dappen dish is full all the way to the top, that brush is never gonna get a good even, even pressure here. Okay, so make sure that you don't fill all the way up. All right, we're gonna start with, so I'm gonna be doing kind of a color blend on the nail. now. As, as I'm doing the first few steps, I want you guys to, we're gonna do another little, I'd like to do little votes and things like that to give you guys some options today. So, you know what, let's do this. I'm gonna show you what each of these colors look like. And then in the chat, I want you guys to tell me if you want me to do just a couple of the colors or if you want me to use all of the colors on our nail today. I think I might have an idea what you're gonna want, but I like to give you guys options. So you let me know in the chat. You want one color, two colors, or all the colors. All right, so we've got some really pretty colors here. Let me just adjust here, give you guys a little bit better view. All right, so let's see, Phyllis is saying purple, yellow, and pink. So we'll start with those colors, show you what those look like. So the purple, and all of these colors are just packed with glitter. So these are glitter acrylics, you guys. They are, oh my gosh, you guys, all, of course. Of course, I kind of thought that that might be the case, but I like to give you options and you guys give your clients options, okay? So show them all the great things that you've got, but give them the options, whatever's in their budget for the day, that's what you wanna do. 
but let's see what did she say purple pink and i can't remember what the other one was so i apologize for forgetting that but i'll just show you all the colors anyways since you guys all seem to want all of them all right so we had our purple our pink our yellow our green you guys, these are so rich. They're so pigmented and they're so glittery. They are absolutely gorgeous. So if you guys got these and you haven't worked with them yet, take them out today and start playing around with them. They are absolutely gorgeous. All right, look at those. Don't you just love them? See all that sparkle? I know you guys in the on camera, you can't see that sparkle as much as it's actually in person, but holy wow. Ooh, look at that green. Yeah, look at that, that shimmer on that. Okay. The blue is like ice. It is. Oh, that's going to be really pretty in the wintertime. I'm, I'm over winter right now, but that is going to be gorgeous in the wintertime. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. And those of you, if you're wondering what my little table wipes are, they're actually our large table towels. I just cut them into quarters or eighths. I, six, I don't even know. I cut them into small pieces like that just because it's easier for me to use. And then I have a stack of them in a little drawer over to the side here. So I always have a bunch of those ready to go. Oh my gosh, Lena Lim, it's storming in New Hampshire. I thought we were done with, with all the storms. Well, stay, stay warm, stay safe, stay out of the snow. All right, so let's come back to our nail here. Um, Kimi Cooper, does this set color come in a set? These colors are our slick pour colors, and these were from our last sale. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be available permanently, but I just got mine today and I was so excited to use them. So um, check back on our website. Um, we may have some more. I'm not positive on that. I'm sorry, I don't have that information, but um, yes, they were part of our last sale. Okay, I'm gonna start with our Speed Clear and I'm gonna build a foundation layer. And when I'm doing glitter acrylics or things where I have the color actually on the nail, I do like to put down a little bit of a layer so that I have something to kind of work off of. And you'll kind of see as I go how this is gonna work. So I'm just gonna pick up a pearl of our Speed Clear. I'm gonna drain out that extra liquid. And then I'm just gonna build out my free edge. Again, you guys, I'm trying a different camera angle here today, so let me know in the chat if it's a good angle, if it's better than for some of you that have joined us in previous live streams, let me know if it's a better angle or if you want me to go back to just kind of that straight on angle. Let me know there in the chat. Okay, so again, I'm just building that extension right up to my free edge. It's maybe slightly overlapping a little bit and that's fine because I'm actually gonna put a little bit of that clear acrylic over that natural nail. And I'll explain why in just a second here. So again, just bringing down that product. Like I said, we're gonna build a stiletto today. So I'm starting to kind of press in my sides here and I'm creating a little bit more of a point to the nail. Okay, looks like you guys are seeing that the angle is better today. Good, thank you for that feedback, we appreciate it. I always like to know what we can do better. And especially as nail techs, we always like to try new things and create different things. So it's always good to get feedback. All right, so we have that built out to the end here. Again, just kind of creating that little bit more of a point to our nail. And let's see here. There we go, a little bit more centered. Now I'm gonna take another small pearl and this time I'm gonna just set this onto the nail. So it's just a smaller pearl. I'm just leaving it fairly wet, keeping that nail angled a little bit more straight down. And I'm just really kind of doing a very, very thin layer. I'm gonna kind of blend that out a little bit. And the reason why I put that little bit of a thin layer is when we do our colored acrylics, our glitters, our things like that, I put that, that thin layer down so that when I go to change out my design, I'm not gonna have to worry about filing all of that product all the way down to that natural nail. I always am gonna have that little bit of clear on there as a protective layer. So that's why I like to do that little bit of clear on there first. Let's bring in our colors here. Let's see, what do I want to start with? Maybe we'll start with the pink. Maybe we'll just go in kind of rainbow order. Pink, yellow, 
green, blue, purple. All right, we got those there. And you guys, I'm keeping the pink a little bit farther away from me because I don't know if you guys heard me before as I always have the curse of the pink powder. And so I try to keep the pink away from me because I tend to spill pink powders. I don't know what it is about pink, but it's it's my curse. So, okay, so we're, we got our colors all set out, ready to go here. I'm kind of giving this product a little bit more time to set up just a little bit because what I like to do is come in and pinch that first layer so that I really get a nice tight pinch in there, especially when I'm working on a stiletto. We want that point to come really nice and tight at the end. And then I'm gonna take my form off so that I have a little bit better idea as to um, what my nail is gonna look like as we go here. So again, pinching in that C curve and when I pinch, you notice that I'm using my two pointer fingers, or I'll use my two middle fingers, or I'll use my two thumbs. I don't pinch with my pointer and my thumb, okay? Be the reason for that is that when you're pinching with your thumb and your pointer, you're gonna get different pressure on both sides. So that way, if you're using a pointer and a pointer, you're gonna get even pressure on both sides. Okay. Um, Natalie, we uh, the tripod that I'm using, I'm actually just using my iPhone here to do the video. And then I have an Archon mount, which is just a phone holder. And it's I just have it right in front of me. And let's see, Tiffany, can I post what I did with my nails? Um, we actually do have the video posted up on our YouTube channel here. So you are welcome to check that out. I tell you exactly what's in them. I can't tell you right now because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot which glitters I used. I think um, the pink, or sorry, the, the teal that I used for my gel polish was Hey Gang. And then I can't remember what the other glitters are. But what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to release my product from my form. I'm just using the point. Sorry guys, let me get a little more on camera there. I'm using the point of my magic wand to really help to loosen that product from the form. Now, as your product sets, it's going to be easier to release. I'm just kind of being impatient, but I'm trying to just help it along a little bit. So make sure that your form is completely released from the product before you pull it off. Otherwise you have that risk of pulling that extension off as well. And we don't wanna make, we don't want that um, extension to come off. So it looks like my product is completely released. There was a little, whoops, sorry guys. There was a little spot, there we go. Okay, so now it's completely released and I can take that form off. So now it actually gives me a little bit better of um, a view as to what my nail is gonna look like when I don't have that form on. You can still see my product because it is so thin. Let me tilt this up just a little bit, there we go. You can see it's still so thin. I have a lot of kind of flexibility to that nail so I can still come in there and get that C-curve really, really pressed in. So as you're working, that's again why I like to do putting that um, C-curve, pressing that C-curve in, in this bottom layer, because as I add layers on top of this, this bottom layer is gonna start to set. If I wait until my top layer is ready to pinch, this bottom layer has already set and I'm not gonna be able to pinch in a tight C-curve. So make sure that if you're doing designs that are layered like this, that you do pinch your C-curve at that base layer. All right, so we're just going to kind of let this product flow on the nail. So I'm gonna pick up some small pearls and I'm gonna keep them fairly wet. I'm just gonna drop that on there and using the liquid that's in my brush, I'm gonna tap this product, kind of move it, kind of blend it, just kind of tapping out. Let me come in a little bit closer so you can see. Just kind of tapping the edges of it, and that's gonna to help to blend that product out. So now I'm gonna come in with a second color. We got the yellow, and again, keeping it still fairly wet, tapping out that edge, it's really going to start to blend that product together. This way it's gonna kind of just fade together, give you just that really pretty blend. And you can add more if you need to add more. Clean up what you need to clean up if you feel like you need, or if you maybe had too much on there. Again, we're adding a little bit of that green, kind of tapping it into that yellow so that they blend together. 
and tapping out that edge so that my next color is gonna blend. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is starting to look kind of like an ice cream cone. <laughs> Anybody think that's what they're seeing too? I love it. And then we're gonna take a little bit of that blue. Whoops. Got a little crazy with that one, guys. Hold on. Let's try that again. Take a little bit of the blue. And again, keeping it wet. Leave that liquid in my brush. I'm not gonna tap out or um, drain out any of that extra liquid. That's what's gonna let your product flow. That's gonna, what's gonna help it blend together. And then just a little bit of that purple at the end just to finish the color blend. And you guys, when I'm blending colors, I kind of do think about kind of that rainbow. So what colors are next to each other in the rainbow? What colors are near each other on the, um, oh, what is it called? The color wheel. So the colors that are near each other on the rainbow or near each other in the color wheel, those are gonna blend together easier. So the say the red and a you know red and yellow or pink and yellow as we have here today, those are gonna blend together than say the yellow and the purple, because those aren't anywhere near each other on that color wheel. Now I'm just kind of coming through, taking an eyeball at this, looking at it to see do I want any more color in any spots? If I do, just pick up and just kind of set down little drops of it wherever you need to, just to kind of fill in or get your color to blend a little bit better. Just make it look how you want it to look. And yeah, maybe just a little bit more green. Margie, I make it look so easy. You guys, when you start working with these products and you learn how to work with them right, the product really does the work for you. So I know you say I'd make it look easy and maybe I've had a little bit more experience, but it really is easy when you start working with them and you know, you know, kind of what what makes the products work and why they work the way they do. And that way it just makes the product work for you. So, and looks like somebody said it's giving you a unicorn sparkle. I love that. Maybe that's what we'll call this nail. This is our unicorn sparkle nail. Love it. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys, again, if you are loving our stream today, if you're loving these designs that we've been doing lately, please definitely subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it, and it really does help us get you guys more education. So definitely subscribe if you're having fun today. If you like glitter, subscribe, and we'll definitely show you more glitter. And in the meantime here, I'm just going to close up my jars, get those out of the way so that I don't accidentally knock over my pink product. And we got our blue. All right, I got everything closed up, so now I don't have to worry about knocking anything over. But I am gonna come back into our speed clear, and we're gonna cap this nail because we don't wanna file the surface of it. We already have our beautiful blend here, and if we were to file this, we would just file off that blend. So now we need to cap with our clear. And also, if you take a look from the side, I'll show you here. You can see I really don't have a whole lot of structure to this nail. It is still fairly flat, still fairly thin. There's not a whole lot, anything really in our arch area. So we want to make sure that we do build up a nice arch and structure to this nail. So again, we are going to come in with our speed clear. Let me resituate here. There we go. And I'm going to pick up a fairly good size of my speed clear. And we're gonna start with our product right at my cuticle area. I'm gonna just hold that product for one, two, three or so seconds, and then I'm gonna set that down. That way it's not gonna run instantly on me. It's gonna have just a little bit more consistency so I can control it a little bit more. But I'm angling that finger downward, and you can see that that product is starting to run and flow just a little bit. And then I'm gonna tilt it up and just kind of blend out just the edge of that product. So it's gonna leave the bulk of it right in that stress area, right where I need the thickness. Okay, so let me just taper that and then take a look from there. So now you can see I've created a nice thin cuticle area here and then it's starting to build up into a little bit of a higher point right here through my arch. We're gonna take another pearl and we're gonna fill in the rest of this free edge. Um, Jillian is asking, would this work to put in Synergy Gel and blend it that way? Absolutely. You can use the slick pour in your Synergy Gels. Just be careful that you're not using 
too much of the slick pour because it is very highly pigmented. And if you use too much, that can actually keep it from curing. So you do wanna make sure that if you add the slick pour to your Synergy gel, that you don't add too much. You don't wanna overpower that gel. But yes, you can. All right, so I just added another pearl right at kind of that connection area. So where the last pearl ended, I just added another bead of my clear, kind of filling in space and then blending out to that free edge. Now, I feel like I might need one more small pearl here at the end just to make sure I have enough thickness. I'm gonna blend backwards just a little bit because I wanna bring a little bit more of that product into my arch area. So whichever direction you're bring, or brushing your, blending your brush, that's the direction that you're gonna be pulling product. So if I need more product back here, I'm gonna blend backwards. If I need more product down here, I'm gonna blend forwards. So wherever your brush direction is going, that's where you're gonna be pulling product. So I do need just another tiny pearl right through that purple area. So just one more, one more little teeny tiny bead. This one I'm gonna drain out on my paper towel here. Not really paper towel, my table towel, sorry. And I'm just gonna blend that again back up into that nail. So blending that in, and then I'm gonna come back through, press that to my free edge, make sure that I've got enough thickness all the way through there. All right, and again, blend back so it's nice and tapered at my free edge. I'm gonna turn on the side, take a look here and see, see how my structure is. Okay, looks like we're right on. So now, you guys, you can see I've got that cuticle area nice and thin. I've got a little bit more thickness up in my stress area and then nice and thin and tapered down at my free edge. Now, I know it's not perfect. It's not, you know, it's got a little lumpy bumpy. That's fine, we're gonna file it and it's gonna look beautiful in the end. Okay, so now at this point, we're just gonna need to let that set. And what I'm gonna do is again, close up my liquid and powder, make sure that I'm not spilling anything. And I'm also going to clean out my brush. Now you guys see that there was a little bit of that glitter residue on my towel here. So I always wanna make sure that I'm getting my brush nice and clean so that I don't have any glitter in there on the next application. Now, here's a suggestion I am going to make. I would recommend having a separate brush and a separate Dappen dish for your glitter applications because even though I'm trying to clean out my brush, there's always gonna be one little piece of glitter that sticks in that brush, and then it's gonna show up when you're trying to do a beautiful pink and white. So having a separate brush and a separate Dappen dish is going to help you guys in the long run, being a little bit of a time saver as well. All right, so let's clear our station here. And let's see here. All right, so we'll get that in there. Again, I'm gonna set all of my other things aside. We'll get our electric file going here. I'm going to take my table towels away. I have my dust extractor mounted into my table here. Let me see, can I come back? So you, those of you that are looking to work, you know, as a full-time nail tech, this is our Young Nails Dust Extractor, and I basically just cut a hole into an Ikea table, put that down in there, and that's how I use my dust extractor. If you don't have it mounted into your table, that's okay too, but I do highly, highly, highly recommend using a dust extractor, especially if you're working full-time in salon. It's gonna just help you so that you get all of that little dust out of your breathing zone. Okay, so make sure you keep yourself safe Keep yourself working a long career. Do all of the things that you can to help protect yourself and protect your health. All right, I'm going to, you know what? I'm actually gonna use our, not our safety bit today. I know I usually grab the safety bit, but I have my X-Cut carbide here, and that's what I'm gonna work on today. A lot of times when I'm working on stiletto nails, I use my X-Cut to kind of help take down any bulk on my sides here, and I can get in there a little bit easier, whoops, sorry guys, a little bit easier with my um, X-Cut than I can with my safety bit. So I, how do I turn it on? Let me see. See if I can pull back just a little bit here. Right underneath, no, sorry guys, I can't get under there. But underneath my table is how I've got the dust extractor mounted. So I still have an opening, so I can just press that button to turn it on underneath. All 
right, let me get back into center. And when we are doing our filing with our e-file to take down bulk, I'm gonna work at about, let's say about 14 to 16,000 RPMs. Um, with acrylic, I do tend to go a little bit on the higher side, so maybe about, um, maybe about 15,000. If you're working with gel, I usually go about 12 to 14. So it just kind of depends on what you're working with. Just have just a couple more seconds. I feel like it's just starting to almost set up. So I just want to give it just a couple more seconds so I don't um, ding or anything on that surface. But I am going to start by doing my sides. Let me see, make sure that you guys can kind of see this a little bit better. All right, I think we're in camera there. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bring that bit right down my side. I'm pulling down. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to get the right camera angle so you guys can see all of this. Maybe we'll try here. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. So I'm coming down my side, I'm pulling that bit down the side. I'm right-handed working in forward and again, just pulling straight down the side. Now on my other side, I'm gonna push up because this is going to go against the rotation of the bit. I don't wanna go in the same direction as the rotation of the bit. So again, I'm pushing up, pulling down. So right side pushing up, left side pulling down. Left-handed technicians, left-handed people, you guys are gonna be working in reverse and you're gonna go opposite. So I'm going on my left side, I'm pu pulling down. On your left side, you'd be pushing up and vice versa, okay? So we do love lefties. I apologize, I'm not left-handed, so I sometimes forget to teach in left-handed, but a lot of the techniques are still the same. Okay, so on my sides, like I was saying, I do use the X cut so that I can kind of get right up into those corners and take down that bulk a little bit more. Now I don't have a ton of bulk on these, but still gonna show you, let me come in camera. Okay. Still like to show you again, I'm gonna pull away. And because this doesn't have that rounded top like the safety bit does, I can get a little bit closer up into that corner in there. So if there was anything hanging down, I can get right in there and pull forward. Okay, I don't try to get that 100% perfect because I am always still gonna come back in with my hand file to make sure that everything is smooth and tapered and perfect, okay? Now, something that I want you guys to notice is you'll see me use my other fingers to balance and kind of put counter pressure. So if I'm filing on my right side, I tend to use my thumb and just put a little bit of pressure there so it's not pushing that nail. I get even pressure from my thumb and the bit at the same time. Okay, so again, pressure in here, and then same thing, I use pressure here. So again, pulling down, pressure, pressure, pressure. Okay, so we got kind of the gist of it. We got our outside perimeter done. I'm gonna turn the nail on the side. I'm gonna look from the side, and then we're gonna come up around that cuticle, kind of tapering in that cuticle area, make sure that's nice and thin by our cuticle. I'm not trying to come all the way around that nail at this point. I'm just kind of tapering that cuticle area. And then I'm gonna work from the top of my arch through that extension, through that free edge. Make sure that you are keeping that bit. Let me move a couple of things on the side here real quick. Make sure that you're keeping that bit on the top of the nail, okay? Do you see how I can still see the bottom part of the bit? If my bit starts to go behind that nail and I can't see where the bottom of that bit is, chances are that it's gonna wrap around and I'm gonna end up cutting my client and probably scaring her and probably cutting myself maybe at the same time. So make sure you guys that when you're working from this view, you keep that bit on the surface of the nail, just, let me show you from this way, right down the center. So I'm working from the center of the nail here down to the side. Don't worry about this side over here, we'll come to that, but just make sure you're working from the center over. Okay, so let me show you. Turn our hand a little bit so you can see better. Again, coming from the top over. And I actually keep my finger positioned pretty tight in there so that if I do come too far, my bit is actually gonna touch my skin rather than coming all the way around and wrapping around. That's just how I hold the nail, so it's kind of my protective 
um, protective technique so that I know that my bit's not going to wrap around. And I'm just kind of eyeballing how my arch is coming in. And I can kind of see that that arch is now starting to really take shape. I'm getting a nice smooth, smooth arch on there. We're gonna turn and look from straight down the barrel now. So now you can kind of see, I've got a little bit more bulk on the sides here. So on the left and the right, I have everything how I want it right down the center. So I'm not gonna file down the center. I'm just gonna pull my bit down those sides. Take down that bulk through the sides. Okay, come back over to the other side, pull all the way through that free edge, taking down all of that bulk. And again, I'm not coming through that top part, just taking the bulk from the sides. Okay, once I have my bulk taken down, you can kind of see it's a little bit more rounded, a little more tapered. Then I will go through and I'll go basically all the way through the whole entire surface, pulling all the way through, getting all of that surface nice and even and making sure that it really just flows, okay? And you can kind of see I'm doing a full long stroke all the way through the entire length so that I'm not putting little short little divots. If I were to just kind of come in right through here and be like, I'll just take a little from here, I'm gonna to start to get a divot right in here. So by coming and pulling all the way through, that's gonna give you a nice smooth finish all the way through that whole nail. Okay, so I think we've got the majority of our shaping done. I like to come back and refine with my sanding band. Now this is kind of an optional step, but this is what I personally like to do. I'm gonna leave a little bit more space in my, um, the shank of my bit here so that I can work all the way back to my cuticle area without that tip of the handpiece bumping in, okay? So this one I'm gonna turn down to about 7,000 RPMs. I'm gonna come right up around that cuticle. And again, this is gonna help me to taper that product really flush down to that natural nail without using my hand file as much, okay? I know you guys have probably heard me say this before, but I like to do as much of my filing with my electric file as I can rather than my hand file because it's just gonna help keep my body intact and help me have a longer career as a nail tech. I'm gonna use the tools that I have available to me to do that. Okay, so again, following all of those same same techniques around the cuticle, along my arch, down my sides, really making sure everything is nice and even. All right, and again, if I needed to, I could come back in a little bit more up into, let's see if I can turn this so you can see a little better, right up into that corner. Make sure if you are using this technique that you're not getting too far up into that corner. You don't wanna be notching that out like you can do with the hand file. Um, so make sure that you're kind of staying away from that area or not putting too much pressure up into there. Just get as much as you need to and then finish getting those last little bits with your hand file. All right. So now, talking about our hand file, I'm gonna come in with our 150 grit, and I've already taken off the sharp edges of this file, but if you haven't, you know, when you, every time you get a brand new file, make sure that you take those sharp edges off. I'm gonna come in straight along, kind of straight along, let me bring this down here. I'm gonna come straight along that nail body area, and then when I get to that extension, then I'm gonna just slightly angle my file because we're working on a stiletto here. We wanna make sure that we get that really nice tight pinch in there. Let me come up here just a little bit. There we go. Is Greg in the chat? Hello, Greg. I hope you're enjoying your vacation. Say hi to all of our wonderful Ireland people for me. Tell them I, I miss them and I would love to come visit them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, so again, we're keeping straight along that nail body and then just angling slightly into that extension. Same thing on our other side. And like I was telling you earlier with the electric file, I do use my fingers again to balance. So pressure on this side when I'm filing on the other side. 
pressure here when I'm filing here. This is especially important when you're working on longer nails because if you're filing down here on the free edge, you don't want to be putting that pressure on that extension and on that nail bed. Okay, so make sure you're balancing. It's also a technique that's going to help you get really straight lines so that that nail's not wobbling back and forth. So you can start to see I'm getting those really crisp, sharp edges here. Nice and straight. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to turn this on the side. And any last little bits of that lower arch, I'm going to clean up with my hand file here. And I'm keeping that file straight in line with the finger. Do you see I'm coming straight in line that with that finger? I'm not angling here. I'm not angling here. I'm not trying to cut into that corner. I'm keeping it straight in line with the finger. And that's going to help you keep those lower arches coming straight out from that natural nail. And you're not going to get those little um, notches right in that corner. Okay, same thing on the side. I'm going to turn on the side here. And again, keeping that file straight in line with the finger. You can also see I'm counterbalancing on top. I'm putting pressure on top so I'm not filing and lifting that nail up. So again, Pressure from opposite sides, counterbalance, make sure everything stays balanced. All right, so I think we've got our perimeter shaping down here. Just touch up that free edge a little bit. And then I'm gonna work through the surface of this nail. I'm gonna start at my cuticle area and I'm gonna work kind of in a rounded motion. I'm not just gonna file with my file flat. I'm gonna come around that curve of the nail. We're trying to really bring that contour of the nail nice and even. If I look from the free edge, let me see if I can come in just a little bit so you can kind of see. Do you see how when I worked on my side walls, I had my file flat up against there. You can see how I've got a flat edge right through here. What I want to happen is I want that to be nice and rounded. So kind of how it looks up here, nice and rounded, but then it comes to kind of drop down that edge okay we're trying to really contour those edges and so i'm again let me come back out oops wrong way so i'm going to come again at a rounded motion so that i'm contouring those sides and i'm taking away that sharp corner and making it more of a rounded surface all right so again i'm not just filing flat i'm filing rounded just kind of pulling through, making sure that that cuticle area is nice and tight, making sure those sidewalls are nice and tight. We'll come over to the other side and same technique, rounding that cuticle out, tapering that down. Now notice how I hold my hand. I actually hold my hand so it, my fingers are going to be kind of a barrier. So if I hold my file here and my fingers are here, I'm going to hit my finger before I hit the client's cuticle. So kind of keep in mind how you're holding that finger. You can use your own to protect your client's skin. Okay, if I was holding, maybe I was holding from here, I kind of have a little bit more, I don't know, instability if you will, and I do tend to come up. You can kind of see I did hit that cuticle. So that's one of my, my tricks. I hold my fingers here so I can use my own fingers as a barrier so that I'm not filing my cuticles or my, my client's cuticles, okay? And again, same thing. We're just gonna kind of round out that side, make sure everything is nice and tapered. I'm gonna take a look from underneath here. I can see I've got a little bit of an opening at the end that usually will tell me that my sidewalls are not perfectly straight out. So I'm gonna come in and take just a little bit more time on my sidewall here. Still filing straight out, but making sure that, there we go, that's a better view. So now I can see I've got just a little tiny little bit more product here, and I'm gonna take a little bit more off the tip so that again, it's just going to come straight out. Make sure my nail's good in there. One more pop in there. Okay, so now I can kind of see that that little opening at the end of my stiletto has gone away. 
can still just barely see it, but that's gonna be kind of a good indicator as to are your side walls even? Are they straight? Are they coming straight out from that natural nail? By having that closed end rather than that little opening on the end is gonna show you that, okay? Just a quick trick to kind of keep in mind. Let's turn our finger around. Let me adjust here so you guys can see. Can I come out? There we go. Maybe not so far. So I'm gonna take a look from my client perspective. And so you guys can see this. There we go. So I'm gonna take a look here, make sure that all my sides are straight. Everything is nice and even. Looks like I was sitting straight today, so my nail is actually nice and straight. A lot of times if I'm sitting crooked or if my client is sitting crooked, I can actually tell in how my nail turns out because if they're sitting crooked, my nail is probably gonna end up crooked as well. So I'm just looking down the barrel of the nail backwards here, making sure that everything is nice and even. Any last little high spots or low spots, I'm gonna just file those out, making sure everything is as smooth and perfect as I can get it. All right, I think we are good there. Let me turn off my dust extractor. Um, Annette, this practice hand is a Young Nails trainer. It's our Young Nails um, trainer hand. Youngnails.com is where you can get all of the products that I am working with today. So all of the tools, all of the products, trainer hand, all of that, youngnails.com. All right, so I think our nail is right where we want it. Let's dust her off. Get all of that dust off there. Do one last quick check. I've got just a tiny little bit one more little swipe at my sidewall here. Make sure I get that little edge. Oh, there we go. Did I get it? Nope. One last little, one last little swipe. There we go. Okay. And one last little swipe over here. And I think we've got all of our little nooks and crannies. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit more of my swipe. Whoops. Again, pumping that onto my brush, and we're gonna clean our nail off, and we're ready to finish our nail. All right, you guys, do you ever get to the point where you're, you're about to you know, finish the nail, put your top coat on, and you're like, maybe it needs something else. Do you guys think it needs something else? Does it need, what, should we, what else should we add to this? Does it need chrome? or does it need um, rhinestones? What do, you, what do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Do you want me to add chrome to this nail or do you want me to add rhinestones to it or some kind of bling on top? In the, <laughs> Kira James, yes, all of the above, okay. Um, and I apologize, I do not speak Italian. Okay, you guys, so whatever we do to finish this nail, I am going to put a coat of our protein bond back on just like we were doing before. Chrome and stones, stones, chrome. All right, you guys, let's, let's start with chrome. And then maybe we'll see where we go from there. Maybe we'll add both. Just depends on what our client's budget is today. <laughs> All right, so let's see. If we're going to do chrome, I'm going to grab a couple of different top coats today. I'm going to grab my ultimate finish, and then I'm also going to grab my stain resistant. And I'll talk you through all of these as we go here. So I'm gonna start with our ultimate finish. And this is the top coat I love to use for chrome. Um, let me grab some chrome here. I think on these nails, we're gonna go with our lighter color chrome. And let me grab an applicator. And I like to use just like the little makeup applicators, those little sponges to apply the chrome. So I'm gonna come in with a coat of our ultimate finish. And bring that up here, come a little closer for you. And I'm gonna show you guys, I know we've had a lot of questions lately about the ultimate finish. Ultimate finish, let me, oops, hang on. Let me come back out here so you guys can actually see. Okay, so ultimate finish is a thicker top coat, 
all right i know a lot of you have questioned it lately but it is a thicker top coat in the colder months it can even feel thicker so it, that could be what's going on so don't panic it is this is how how ultimate finish is so don't worry it's all good but i'm going to use this for our chrome application because it is a tack free top coat but it does have just a little bit of a i call it a grip so we're going to cure this i just want to make sure that everything is coated evenly when i'm doing my chrome applications i really want to make sure that i give that top coat just a kind of a couple of seconds to really self level now notice how that little ring light you guys can see that little ring that's my ring light you can kind of see how that's reflecting if you see it wobble or waver a whole lot that means that there's an uneven spot in your nail but if you go through that whole nail and you get that really kind of a crisp looking oval that means that your nail is fairly flat and it's fairly even okay so i'm going to pop this into our light let me bring our light in here and i'm only going to cure this whoops did i ding Nope, we're good. I'm only gonna cure this for a 30 second freeze. So when you're working with the chrome, you only wanna freeze it for about 30 seconds so it has a little bit more grip. So when we're putting our chrome on, it's gonna really grab onto that chrome. Uh, let's see, Victoria is asking, how can I prevent filing the sidewalls on the skin? I sometimes do that, not all the time though. Um, Let's see, filing the sidewalls on the skin. So again, it's probably partly putting that opposite pressure and really making sure that your file is straight up and down. So as you're filing, making sure that your file is in this position, not this position, because that's gonna come in on those sides. Um, and then also making sure that you've taken the sharp edges off of your file. Because if I'm filing my nail, I can, Sorry guys, I don't really want to file, but if I'm filing my nail, I can file it and it's not going to damage my own skin because I took those sharp edges off. So give that a try, okay? All right, so we've got our ultimate finish top coat cured for about 30 seconds. Let's do, let's try the yellow, see how that turns out here. So I'm going to take just a little bit of that chrome powder on our applicator and just smooth that over. Oh yeah, you guys, good choice. Good choice on the chrome. Cause it's still going to leave a slight sheer look to it, but it's also gonna give us that really pretty chrome finish. So I'm really working that chrome into that kind of grippy surface on my top coat. And then I'm gonna turn my um, little applicator over and just kind of dust off that extra powder. I wanna make sure that I clean any of that extra dust off so when I do my top coat, I'm gonna get that really good chrome finish and it's not gonna look um, kind of chalky or, yeah, I guess chalky is the best word. So again, just taking off a little bit more of that residue from the chrome powder. Now at this point, so to apply the, um, apply the chrome, I used, whoops, Sorry guys, too many bottles here. I used the Ultimate Finish because it has that grip. Now I'm gonna go into my stain resistant when I'm working over a, um, an enhancement because the stain resistant is a little bit thinner and I like to do two coats of top coat to really make sure that my nail is sealed. So when you're working with chrome, two coats of top coat is ideal. Really making sure you get down along those sides making sure that you cap all of those areas. And when you do two coats of top coat, that really helps to ensure good even coverage over the whole nail. So two coats, and again, I'm using stain resistant because it's a little bit thinner. And if I were to, you know, if I wanted to use the ultimate finish, I can, but it does tend to feel just a little bit more bulky when you have to do those two coats of top coat. So I'm gonna do another 30 second freeze all right now i see some of you saying that we should do rhinestones or butterflies i don't have butterflies but let's grab just for you guys i'm gonna do rhinestones today so we've got our awesome kit of i guess that way sorry um our rhinestone collection here so let's go ahead and you know what let's do some hearts i think those would be really cute on here so I'm going to grab my clear sculptor and I'm using the precision tube. Oops, right side up. 
I'm gonna use the Precision Tube Hard Gel because I really like how this grabs onto those stones. So let's take, where do we wanna put them? Maybe just right up top here. So I'm gonna take just a couple of little dollops. We'll start with one. See how we go here. And in the rhinestone kit, it does have a handy dandy picker upper tool. These little things on the sides are here. Those just help it to sit down into the container. You can take those off. I tend to leave them on. I don't know why. I just do. So let's grab, oops, sorry you guys. As I'm talking, our gel is running. I don't want it to run. So I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm just gonna take a little bit of that off. We don't quite need that much. So I'll clean that off here real quick. Okay, let's grab a little heart. We'll set that down onto our nail. Oh, that's cute. Okay, how about maybe one more? Eh, maybe right there. So just a tiny little dot of our clear sculptor. And we'll pick up another heart yep i'm loving this i know it's not valentine's day anymore but i still love the hearts okay so i'm going to take my brush and i'm just going to kind of thin out any of that gel that was squeezing out kind of blend it in so that i don't have too much of a ridge right around there and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay, so it's not really, the gel isn't really bulging out or anything on the sides. Let's pop that in our light, just really quick. For just, oh, again, maybe another 30 second freeze. And we'll set those off to the sides. And then I'm going to do one more coat of our stain resistant. And I'm going to show you guys how to really get your, um, get your stones to adhere really well to the nail. It's kind of a trick. And I like to explain this as, you know how when you get a nice diamond ring, I don't have one, obviously, but when you have a nice diamond ring, you have that stone and then you have the prongs that kind of hold that stone in at the base. That's what we're going to do with our top coat. So let me grab... I'm gonna use our striper brush. Let's see what I can find here, see what's handy. I'm gonna just grab one of our striper brushes from our um, brush kit. This is the number two, just a tiny little liner, if you can even see that on camera. And I am going to take my mixing tile here. I'm gonna take a little bit of my stain resistant top coat on that tile. And I am going to take my liner brush. Let me come in here so you guys can see a little bit better. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that top coat and I'm just gonna run that around the base of my stones. And again, that's gonna work like those prongs on your diamond ring. It's gonna hold that onto the nail and it's gonna fill in any little gaps underneath that stone so that you don't catch it on your hair or anything like that. And make sure that you're just keeping this around the base of the stone. You're not getting it up on the top of the stone. Because if you take, if it gets up on the top of the stone, then you start to lose some of the, um, the reflectiveness of those stones. So just around the base of it, just to kind of seal around that base area. Now, don't worry if you get a little product over here on the sides. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. But I do want to just make sure that I get right around all of those edges to encase that stone. Then we're actually going to go through and do our second coat of top coat. Again, making sure that everything is sealed around the sides, around the edges, making sure that chrome is really well sealed onto the nail. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that top coat since we've got just a small little space in between. I'm gonna use my liner brush to really seal around the edges anywhere that I won't be able to get with my um, top coat brush. So coming right around there. Now I'll come back with my brush in the bottle here and we're going to finish top coating that whole nail. So we've got our stones sealed in there. We've got our edges sealed. 
Now we're just going to take a little bit more to do one more final seal of our top coat. And then we are gonna cure our nail. So we're gonna cure for a full 60 seconds. Give this nail a really good chance for everything to cure all the way through. Come back here. Get that in the light, get that in for 60 seconds, and then we will cure. All right, you guys, let's see. Um, Annette is asking, do you make lives all the, at this time often? You guys, we are trying to do more lives for you. Um, if you definitely want to come back and join us, make sure that you do subscribe to our channel. Set your notifications so that you can get those notifications when we do go live. Um, you don't want to miss out on any of the fun things, so make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you do set those um, notifications so that you always know when we're going, going live and learning some new fun things. So. You guys, thank you again so much for joining us here. Let me flip around real quick. Just wanna let you know how much we appreciate you being with us today and joining us on these live streams. Um, join us all the time when we go live. I'm gonna just kinda of wait about five more seconds for our nail to finish curing, and then I'll show you our final look. Um, so let me flip back around there. Our nail is final cured here. We do want to make sure that we take off that tacky surface. When you're working with the stain resistant top coat, it is a hard gel. It does have a tacky finish to it. So we're going to use a little bit of our swipe. We're going to come through, cleanse that tacky surface off really well. Again, right around those stones, kind of, I can kind of see, I fold my, um, my lint free wipe in half so I can really get in there. You want to make sure that you're not leaving any of that residue in between because that's just going to get sticky things on there. It's going to um, collect lint and dust. And then you also don't want to be leaving any uncured gel on your client's nails. So there is our finished nail. You guys, I think you made some great choices today, adding that chrome and adding those rhinestones on there. So a super fun nail. Hope you guys enjoyed it today, and I hope you will join us on future streams. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.